Welcome back to Never Shut Up. I got caught slipping right there. It's your boy Marcel Swat. Let's fuck up some comments. Fuck up some comments right there. <coughs> Messing up. All right, Cam and Mace. Killer Cam, Killer Cam. Oh, y'all know Cam Ron is one of my favorite rappers ever. Do not argue me, okay? You're not going to change my mind. He, I ain't say he's the best. He ain't Mount Rushmore. He one of my favorites, though. That's sucker. Killer Cam Cam. All right. I think that sports media is oversaturated at the moment, but at the same time, it doesn't matter because the cream will always rise to the top. Industry either changes or disappears. There is no more Radio Shack or Circuit City. And the cameraman with the helicopter pilot for the news company has been replaced by the drone. Damn. I didn't even think about that. You're right. But if it changes, you have to find a way to navigate, adjust, and stay relevant. I love seeing what Cam and Mace are doing because I have to know for myself that I could pivot into something new as well and get at it. That is an amazing point. They have shown you what you should already know, that you can do what the hell you want to do in this world as long as you do it good. <laughs> like, if you do it good, we don't give a... We, oh, Oh, hey, hey, let's go get two rappers and make them talk sports. That ain't something you sit down and think about. But when you see it, you're like, that worked. <laughs> you know what else will work? Two comedians. I mean, two comedians may be even better, but we'll see. The, the right comedians, two homie comedians. Imagine like Bill Burr. Eh, he's just so funny. Bill Burr, like, I, I don't know who could go with Bill Burr. Uh, shit. Give me another one. Bill Burr is somebody just going at it on sports topics. He kind of does it already, but I mean like full focus. Because when they don't have any guardrails, man, it's so funny. It's next level. Cam and Mace don't do it for me. I'm more excited about former athletes doing it. You get more of an inside understanding. Cam and Mace aren't much different than Stephen A when he's talking trash. Yeah, I mean, look, no, nothing's perfect. Uh, so you look at Cam and Mace, you can say, yeah, they ain't going the deepest on stuff. Sometimes they do, especially basketball. They be going there. But then at the same time, you're like, oh, they just talking trash. They just talking, they talking about who dating who. But we all do it. So I, I don't really like to go there because we all do it. It's just how hard and how much you lean into that. But I like it. I like their show. I can't lie. Love it. We're talking about track. Do you need to run track if you play football? Love it. This is especially relevant with Marvin Harrison not showing out for his pro day because he didn't train for drills. He trained for the NFL. Yeah, and they will discount you if you don't have what they need going through the offseason when you're getting drafted as a prospect. If you ain't killing the three-cone drill, we don't know if you can play. But I do respect all of those drills because they do translate to football. But at the same time, dog, just turn on the tape. Just watch me play against people. That should tell you more than anything, right? So um, I'm still a firm believer that you don't need to run track anymore. It used to be a thing. Now, running eight hundreds and then talking about you turning the corner as a DN, I mean, it, I mean, look, if you run, you're going to be in better shape. I ain't saying get out of shape. I'm saying be in shape, but be in football shape. Ask Christian McCaffrey about that. Dion, Nick Chubb, Tyreek Hill, great track athletes and football players. Of course. Yeah. I ain't say that. You, I said, did not say if you run track, you can't play football. I'm saying the top running track gives you a great base, gets you in shape. Playing football and doing football drills, let's just say uh, Mount Rushmore. Let me give you the Mount Rushmore. What we just do? Dion, he's on there. He ran track. LT, run no track. Uh, <laughs> Reggie White, Bruce Smith, those are big dudes. Run no track. Uh, Barry Sanders, did he run track? Like the point is. I know a lot of football players who didn't run no damn track, and they were beasts, right? Beasts. So, whatever. This is so true. I started running track in high school, which carried over to summer track. I became a beast in football, basketball, track, and baseball. Yeah, you agree with him. I get it. Uh, Marcus, me, I guess he's talking about. You're mistaken on this one. High school football players need to run track. Most players who were really good at football ran track because when I was in high school, track helps fast twist muscles, recovery, endurance, and lock an athlete's inner beast. Facts and explosion. Let me just tell y'all why y'all y'all all wrong. Y'all ran track because y'all have specialized trainers. <laughs> y'all had no facilities and resources, and the guy who's training you explicitly for your sport, like like Tom House and those kind of guys. Remember those speed coaches used to go through the NFL. Yeah, imagine you had him or your old track coach there, two miles. 
Y'all living in the old school because it worked for you. It could have worked better if you had what they have now. That's all I'm saying. All right, LeBron's sacrifice. I mean, he missed a lot of his children growing up, but was still 10 times the father than his own. I'm not a big LeBron fan as I don't really want politics and sports, but look at his kids. They are good kids. Facts. That part. I should have chose ball over friends. <laughs> Somebody said. Hey, y'all got to value education first, value ball second, and then go at it. Obviously, love your life, love your family, love your friends, but this whole imbalance of ball over books is, you got to be a scholar baller, scholar baller, scholar baller. If you're not, you're going to find out the hard way you should have been. And please tell kids this. And start showing them through encouragement. Encourage them for their straight A's. Encourage them for the spelling bee that they are in. Stop just only showing up to gangs. Show up to all the, the stuff at school as well. You have a finite time to be a, as great as LeBron is. Absolutely no point retiring early and wondering what could have been. Milk your gifts as long as you can. Preach. I hate when people say retire. You're going to mess with your legacy. Legacy. Oh, now you want to talk legacy. But when I was broke. When I was on welfare, when I was just dribbling in the gym, nobody was with me. You wasn't with me when I was shooting in the gym. Legacy. Ain't no legacy talk then, huh? Now your ass gonna get on this train all late talking about, oh, you need to stop. Pull over. Stop it. In your legacy. Man, I'll play till I die on this <laughs> Man, if I'm playing and they paying, what you saying? That's the line. If I'm playing and they paying, what you saying? I don't hear you. Man, ball till you fall. Ball till you fall. Good to hear a channel not crapping on modern day athletes all day. Charles must hate when Wiley says positive things about Bron. Are y'all saying Charles, my man Sebastian, he hates LeBron? I don't know if he hate him, but he certainly don't give him his flowers. He don't give him his flowers. Point being, I'm going to give everybody their flowers. I don't believe in that. Like, I don't care what the industry does. I don't care what YouTube likes. I don't care about views. and I don't care about none of that. All I care about is building up somebody that my kid can look up to or my kid can become. That's it. I'm doing this selfishly. I ain't lying. <laughs> I am building up people so that we have more heroes, more fatheads of fresh people. I don't give a damn. I know we could get more likes and clicks. And <laughs> I already done did something. I already done been me. You do you. And if you do it too much and you do it wrong, I'm going to watch your ass up. That's how we do it. All right, let's bring in Dr. Chow right now because my man, Dr. David Chow, is in the building and he got some topics to talk about you know he in the lab right now dr child what's up brother how you feeling i'm doing well you're catching me before a first surgery today friday surgery god look at that people are really in the back the or this fresh and spry god i feel like i'm an insider right here well let's not waste too much time let's talk about march madness right now can't say i'm much into college basketball anymore that has passed me by but vasectomies what they doing in college sports? What's going on? <laughs> well, it's been talked about for a while that a lot of uh, men choose to get their vasectomies right before March Madness so they can sit at home and watch. And the stats do show that March is the number one month for vasectomies. March is the number one month. And, <laughs> and I, I, I actually have some yeah, – I did have a, a couple people on Wednesday before the Thursday games – have knee scopes and they did note that the timing was pretty good related to thursday and friday <laughs> recovery and i don't know about, about your little guy but this was my <clears> son <throat> last year i don't know if you can see this he uh called in oh, he sick and uh then uh did did uh uh then was up on the I couch uh posted up on the couch with his ice cream and and uh and what have you and then this year he went to school on Thursday. I was like, oh, he forgot. He must have forgot. Mm. Within half an hour, he was in the nurse's office. He made first tip, and here he was again this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Hey, Dr. Chow, then, it's, it's starting then, to wane then, on him, though. I sent you a picture about 20 minutes later, and he's like this. I'm like, should I send him back to school? I think he's okay. Or should I let him be? Or should I cancel patients and hang with him, right? So I think it's real that <laughs> we train him early for this uh, stuff. He, he's oh, caught man. on. Quick. That's good to see he has the fever. It's good to see he has that <laughs> March Madness fever. I, I, I used to have it. I don't have it anymore, and I'm not mad at those who are still under the spell. But tell me about March Madness right now, because it seems like 
NIL conversations. And a lot of people are saying they just can't even get this right if you're the NCAA. Look, fact, the NCAA was formed in Teddy Roosevelt times for safety because football players were dying because it was leather helmets and no helmets. The NC2A mm. started about safety. It became this political body and eligibility and all this stuff. Now, all, with NIL, all that's left for the NCAA is March Madness. That's where mm. they make all their money, whatever. And then Selection Sunday happens, and they open up the NIL portal the next day. So all the news is about <laughs> NIL portal instead of, like, who's yeah. playing who? Like, yeah. Mind blown. You can't even get your number one thing right, which is March Madness. Let Monday everyone talk about the brackets. Instead, you're talking about transfer portals. And quite honestly, there's been at least a dozen teams that, because of the NIL portal, who turned down the NIT. Now, the NCAA probably doesn't care about the NIT, and it shows, but the NC, the NIT is probably at this point <laughs> done. You, think? Uh, you know, all they got now is Kareem Abdul Jabbar in that tournament. Otherwise, they're kind of done because all these teams opted out because they were dealing with NIL. Man, it's a lot going on and the wild, wild west continues to eat its own. And that's what's happening, I think, at the NCAA level. Let's switch gears to get to baseball. I just see a headline go by that Otani caught up in a gambling scandal. Then you read some details. You're like, what the hell is going on? And I've always thought these players with these interpreters, you better watch them because they're going to get you into something. Tell us what happened with old Toddy. Well, look, you've been there in the locker rooms, and I've seen players trust too many managers or agents yep. and other things. And imagine how easy it would be for an interpreter. You can't read English. You can't speak English <laughs> very well. And docu sign this and let me do mm -hmm. this. And you're, you're the right-hand man. So I could see it happening and I have seen and you've seen players get taken advantage of before. But what I don't understand is, let me ask you this, Marcellus. How, let's say I was your translator, I was your boy or something. And let's say I got into a little financial trouble. You might bail me out of 45,000, maybe yeah. if I'm lucky, 450,000. 4.5 million? I mean, million. Uh, look, what is going <laughs> on with that? And, uh, I don't know what's happening there. And, and the changing stories obviously gives suspicion. My only theory is I always try and, you know, when there's two sides of the story, he stole money, but he was there to transfer money. That's where there's two different stories. Maybe the truth is somewhere in the middle. I have no idea. Obviously, mm. there's a lot of interest here. Gambling's not legal in California. But then again, apparently no one's ever been prosecuted for gambling. They've only prosecuted <clears throat> bookmakers. Now, the league might do something, Major League Baseball, as if he bet on baseball for sure, but so far he hasn't. The only thing I can say is maybe Otani was there to save him the first time for 500000 and perhaps the second time for 500000 and then said no more, and then there were a couple more transfers. And maybe, you know, when there's two <laughs> sides of the story, the truth is somewhere in the middle, you know? Damn right, it's somewhere in the middle, like that Falcons tampering scandal. Uh... Uh, stories are changing, things are coming out. What you hearing, Doc? Well, look, it is absolutely illegal for teams, personnel to contact players during that window. Now, here's the thing. When I was a medical doctor in the NFL, very routinely the GM would say, check this out, pending trade or free agent. And of course, for, for combines and, and draft picks, that's what you do. You check them out at combines. Yeah. So it's not unusual for medical staff to get involved in checking things out. But here's the technicality. It's not illegal for the Patriots to sit on the sidelines and steal signs and watch someone and write down things by hand. It's not illegal for the Houston Astros on second base to spy in for the catcher sign. What is illegal is electronic monitoring from center field and, ba and banging trash cans, electronic things. What is illegal is the filming of that. It's not illegal for the Falcons to find out about it. It is technically illegal for the Falcons personnel to speak directly to Kirk Cousins. They just had to speak to his agent, tell the agent to send medical records. 
that with permission from Kirk Cousins, they could have talked to the doctor. They just had to do it the right way. And I don't know what the truth is. So, you know, uh, you ain't cheating, you ain't trying, but there are lines in the <laughs> sand and there's ways around it. Now, if they picked up the phone and called Kirk Cousins, that's technically tampering. They could have picked up the phone and talked to his doctor. That's not tampering. Yeah, well, we know if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying because you're trying to win. You're trying to get it. You're trying to achieve. But it's so hard to do that. Why would someone ever get in a position where they gave some of that money back, some of that achievement back? What the hell is Jimmy G doing? And what mistake did he make to give back, what, $11 million? What was that about? He had a guaranteed contract where there's a provision if he got suspended that he is no longer guaranteed. And he violated, he took some medication apparently. He haven't said what. I don't know if it was Adderall or, or what have you. But he has now admitted that he messed up in the way that he should have filed the therapeutic use exemption. There are certain oh. medicines, as you know, in the NFL that are illegal. But if you declare them and go through the process and file a therapeutic use exemption citing oh. medical need you're allowed to do it and apparently he didn't do that and so that cost him the suspension voiding the guarantee now the interesting thing about this is apparently this was pending from early in the season and you know it only came out later maybe the Raiders even kind of knew about it and they knew this yeah. is why they knew that uh this this is why he was benched okay the, we know we can get out of his guarantee but if he gets injured we're not going to get out of his guarantee uh, et cetera, related to the therapeutic use exemption. So this is, you know, look, otherwise he would have been uh, uh, paid all this money to, to sit or be able to sign the Rams for a minimum contract, like Russell Wilson signed with the Steelers for a minimum contract because he's got this big fat guarantee. Yeah, they were like, sit his ass down. We know we're going to get some money back for this, so don't even risk it. Smart play. Uh, here's a smart play. I love when a player gets over. Chase Young, one year, $13 million. Sign, Suzy sign. Ouch! My neck, my neck and my back. What's going on there, Doc? Well, the, in theory, the, the Saints are saying we knew about it and we were okay mm -hmm. with it. But then yeah, okay. the also report comes out that with this neck surgery, he's going to miss part, part of training camp. Well, if you're missing part of training camp, where's the guarantee week one? You signed a one-year deal, a healthy deal for $13 million. Good on Chase Young. But I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not going to name any names, but one time with <laughs> the Chargers, and I'm not going to get the, into the specific story, we drafted a player, and five minutes after we drafted the player, we get a phone call from the agent. And the agent said, yeah, he actually suffered an injury after combines. I was like, okay, after combines, it's not on me. Okay, I didn't miss the injury <laughs> on exam. And the team actually came up with a story <coughs> to say, we knew about it. We just thought he was that good. Okay, so the Saints yep. are saying, we knew about this. We just thought he was that good. The bottom line is, he passed the physical, he signed. There ain't nothing New Orleans can do about it. Okay, and... As long as he didn't physically, he didn't lie about anything about when in the exam, there's nothing New Orleans can do about it. So it makes sense if they just say nothing to see here. We think he's ready. We were going to pay him anyways. Well, who knows what the real truth is, but this is why medical and physicals are important. Yeah, so the, the old will deal with it internally without saying anything externally. But you know, they looking at him side eye. What the hell? Well, it's, Doc, I'll get you out. On this note, you ran into an old friend of mine, it, it seems, in the name of Jeff Goldman. What, what are you and Jeff talking about, man? What's going on? I don't know. We were talking. He, I had him on my podcast because he's Mr. College Basketball, right? I had him on the yeah. podcast on Monday. Good man. And, yep. Goodman. And, and he ended up talking about, uh, you know, because I guess he said that uh, back in the day he covered the Buffalo Bills. And he started naming names and your name came up and of course he loved you so the question that he wanted to ask you is do you, do you remember he said your locker was next to ted washington's and ted yeah, yeah, washington yeah. did not love talking to the media and uh nope. shooed them away all the time and apparently one time he uh, <clears throat> went up to ted washington as you were sitting next to him in the locker and he got shooed away pretty dramatically <laughs> and you looked up at him and uh and he wanted to know <laughs> what you were thinking at the time and if you even remember the incident my prediction was you wanted to help the dude but you couldn't 
because veteran yeah. guy right there <laughs> was ready to go. But I told him, Marcellus will remember that incident. Marcellus's nature is to go up to little kids on the street. He wanted to give you a hug and give you an interview and help you. But he's like, uh, my big brother is watching me right here. I can't go against what he just did to you right there. Uh, you nailed it, Doc. You know me very well. I remember all of those incidents. And it was eye-opening because two, two ways. One, first of all, if you know Ted Washington, his fingers are as big as my legs. Like, he's just gigantic. Mount Washington, right? And so he was the nicest guy ever, gentle giant, but he looked like a bear. So he always was imposing. So before the media would come in, he's clowning around. We laughing, giggling. And as soon as he knew they were coming in, he'll say, watch this Wally and throw on that face and that big grizzly bear move, move. And the funniest part, doc, is they believed him. They thought he was mean or not nice. And I was like, this is really crazy. And so they believed him so much. I wanted to hug him all. Like, no, he's just playing. It's just an act. But he never broke walls. So he would do that every single day. And I was just sitting there like, this is amazing. This dude is really running this racket on all of the media. And they think he's one way when he's completely the other way. So fun times, Doc, man. Now, I know you got to go back in that room, cut somebody up. What's your first surgery? Can you say that? Or is that a HIPAA law issue? Oh, yeah. I mean, we got some knees and, and shoulders today. More knees than shoulders today. Some knee scopes, some ACL, uh, shoulder uh, instabilities. Uh, you know, I look, I, I just run the play that's called, right? My staff, I mean, like, you know, like, you know, just like you. The next play, okay, I can run them all here. Just tell me what the next play is and I'll, and I'll, uh, I'll run it. When we break huddle, I'll know what I'm doing. All right, that's my guy, Dr. David Chow. Appreciate you, brother. Go run those plays and ball out today. All those surgeries oh. just sound like one thing to me. Ching, ching, you better get paid today. Today's a good day in Dr. Chow's world. <laughs> Appreciate you, brother. Man, and I know what pickleball, right, everybody's getting hurt everywhere, so it's a crazy dynamic. Appreciate you, Dr. Chow. All right, y'all, let's get into this Wiley-ism. Yeah, they tell us don't play pickleball because... All we're going to do is get Dr. Child rich. Well, confidence is the management of doubt. Mm. That's what confidence is. Y'all stop getting fooled by these people talking about, oh, man, you got to believe, and I, I never stop believing it. You never stop believing in yourself? All right. You ever get challenged in that belief? Let's talk about that. Of course, you kept going. You kept moving, sometimes faster than others. But when we talk about doubt, we all have to deal with it. All of us. Yep, him too. Her too. We all have dealt with doubt. But what's confidence? It's how you manage that doubt. There it is. Ding, 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 ding. When people say, oh, man, I don't care what people think. We all care what people think. We just don't let it get to us, right? We manage your thoughts versus my value. That's the simplest way you can say it. I manage my doubt, you doubting me, versus my confidence. So I got this whole pool of confidence and here comes doubt creeping in derner, derner. I got to manage that sucker and get to where I got to go. That's what confidence is. You got a big game. You nervous. You know you got to go against number 27 from the other side. He insane. Oh my God. What am I going to do? You got to manage that doubt. You got to make sure that when that creeps in, you keep it contained. You can't get rid of it fully. You can't. It just, it just is. It's a part of it, right? That's why guys miss free throws at the end of the game because they, that doubt is always there. And then, then it, then it, bang! Something they could do a thousand times. You literally could just have them in a pressure field situation or no pressure and say, hit a hundred of them in a row. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, game on the line right now. Miss one. <laughs> it's like, what? It's the management of that doubt because the doubt is the consequences, etc. So, Make sure you guys out there know what that is. Confidence is the management of doubt. That'll do it for today's episode of Never Shut Up. You want to come in here and say hi? It's an itty bitty alert. Look at my little girl. Say hi to everybody. <laughs> All right. Love you guys. Have a great weekend. Pickleball time. Yes, baby. Peace.